G'day guys, welcome to the first match preview edition of My Blue Heaven for 2021. I'm here just to run a bit of an eye over our opening game of the 2021 season, 76 hours away, our big round one clash against Richmond at the MCG. Thursday night, 7.30 kickoff, only 50% capacity will be pretty much full of Richmond supporters considering it is their home ground. That is disappointing, but that's the way it is at the moment. Um, so we're up against it. Not only are we facing one of the best teams in the last 30 years, we're also gonna face a, a very emotional um, Richmond supporter base who are gonna see the unfurling of the last two premiership flags. They've won three out of the last four. It is a superb record they're, they're, they're building. Um, I've heard you know, a lot of people sort of say, you know, this might be the good time to get to Richmond. Um, you know, the fact that they've won their flags, um, you know, they're early in the season, they might be a little bit underdone. I, I call bullshit on that. Um, this team are going to possibly create a lot of history. Um, they know perfectly well the history of the Richmond Football Club. Um, and never before in the history have they won three flags in a row, three times they've won back-to-back -back flags. They're a part of that now, but they could be part of a group. This group could be part of the greatest ever Richmond Football Club, and that must be a legacy that, that I'd want to leave if I was a footballer and part of a team, um, and I reckon they'd be desperate to win the flag this year. So we've got our work cut out. They want to get off to a really, really good start. Um, I think if we're going to be realistic, um, you know, they've got us covered pretty comfortably in, in all facets over the ground, both defensively through the midfield and also offensively. Um, but it's more than just that. So if you look at those in isolation, defence, midfield and, and forwards, they, they have got a synergy where those three different parts of the ground almost appear to be one. Um, it's almost like you don't separate them. They just seem to work beautifully. There's, there's this, there's this, they seem to be manic, but at the same time, they'd be so fluent. Um, and the way they play together, the way they read each other's, um, you know, brains, the way, they, the way the forwards are in, in connection with the midfield and the way the defenders are in, in connection with both the midfield and in, in the forwards, is unbelievable. Whereas us, we, we've got a lot of work to do in that regards. Um, we seem to be pretty much, we play as a defensive unit and midfielders don't seem to be in connection with our forwards and vice versa. And that's something which I think we'll all be a supporter base be looking for a, a huge improvement in 2021. I'll just go right back to round three last year when we upset the, the Cats at... Um, at Cadenia Park. I think that was the last sort of time where we saw just a glimpse of the potential of our team, if it can click. Um, but on that night, I did mention in, in, the, in the review I did of that game that the Cats were definitely off in the first half of that game. It was almost like they didn't come to play and we, we just flicked, you know, we flicked the switch and it just all happened. Um, but we never really saw that, maybe the Bulldogs game, we never really saw that, that synergy and connection um, with our team and playing as a collective unit. Um, so I'm really looking forward to seeing how that evolves throughout 2021 and particularly in this game against the best team in the competition. I know um, injuries, uh, we talk about injuries and we'd love to have our best team on the park, but I hate, I hate using injuries as an excuse. Um, I think it's a bit of a cop out, particularly when you're into year six or seven of a rebuild and we're starting to talk um, so much about how much better our depth is. It just happens to be that most of our injuries to our, to our big tall keys, a lot of our game plan is based around those. Um, but we've had time to, to, I suppose we had time to work that out. No Charlie, um, you know, and, and obviously his injury clouds under Harry and, and Levi and, and Gov. Um, it looks like uh, Harry will play, it looks like Levi will play. So. The injuries are in our front half, so there's no excuses as far as I'm concerned about our midfield, who is pretty much at full strength, um, and our defence, which is pretty much at full strength as well, other than Caleb Marchbank. So 
There's no excuses not to be competitive um, in this game through those sections of the ground, both from a, a defensive point of view, from a team defensive point of view, and also from an offensive point of view as well. So we should be able to get plenty of drive from a midfield which, which is pretty much intact. So there's no real excuses. Um, and it's about our key forwards, the ones that do play, about being competitive and bringing the ball to the deck and letting our smalls go to work. Okay, so it's about being predictable. Um, so let's see, see that unfolding. Disappointing, we can't see our best forward structure in place, but we've just got to work with what we've got. It's hard to talk about individuals when you're talking about Richmond, but you always come back to someone like Dustin Martin. I just think he's nearly impossible to tag just because of the mere fact, because he's pretty much protected um, in what Richmond enabled him to do. And he also breaks the tag so well by going forward. So it's almost like you've just got to leave him alone and hope for the best. I'd be trying to, if we're going to play, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna hark on about this for most of the year, particularly in the first part of the year about the role of Ed Kerno. I, I am a great believer if Ed's going to be in the team at this juncture of his career, that he can't be in there just as a just as an extra midfielder or a winger. I just don't think he uses the ball well enough. So I'm, I'm wanting Ed to play, if he's going to play, he's going to have to play a traditional lockdown role. And the bloke that I'd be target, targeting is either Dion Prestia or Trent Cotchen. I'd be probably more swaying towards Cotchen just because he, I believe, and it just happens to be that he's captain as well, and this is why he's such a terrific leader. He's their barometer um, in regards to, particularly if they're down early, um, he is the one who gets them back into the games just through pure selfless acts. He's, he's become such an enforcer in the way he plays. And I never thought when I first saw Trent Cotchen play that he'd become this player. Um, he, 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 the way he's changed his game is just a credit to him. And I'd love to see Ed sort of try and work him over. Um, I don't know about whether Ed's got it in him within his demeanour to work him over physically, but I'd like to, like to annoy him and get under his skin um, and whether it's Trent Cotchen or Prestia, or I think Dion Presti is their other sort of A-grade midfielder, um, it's one or the other. It could even be a Shane Edwards. I'm not, uh, um, yeah, a, a teacher Edwards. I'm not quite sure. But Ed's got to play that lockdown role. He can't just run around willy-nilly, collecting the ball at will and, and using it poorly by foot going inside forward 50. So that's going to be interesting to see how we use Ed. Um, if we look at... The, the Richmond's forwards, it's a dynamic forward line. There's no doubt about that. I think I'm comfortable going into this game knowing that Wiedering is going to do a reasonable job, a reasonable job on Tom Lynch. Um, and we, we saw that last year. And I think best and fairest winner now, coming into his sixth or seventh year of, of senior football, I think we're pretty comfortable with Wiedering playing on Richmond's best tall. I think... Jonesy on Revolt's a little bit of a worry just because because Jack is such a clever player. Um, and what we do know with, with, with Liam Jones is he has struggled on, on clever players in the past. But that that is the other matchup. So he, he stitched him up in the first quarter last year. I think he hit four early goals on, on, on Liam, but he, he hit back pretty hard after that. It's the next layer down that is so unpredictable. Um, and the way... The, their smaller forwards working together. Um, and we continue to underrate them too. And, and it really annoys me because you look at someone like Jason Castagna, who I know he keeps poorly and he, he wastes opportunity, but he just he's just an ever-presence for Richmond. He, he's pretty strong in the air. Um, he's good off the deck and he's cheeky and he's elusive and he's a smart forward. Um, and three goals in the opening round last year with, with Rioli, who always seems to play well against us, and, and Bolton as well. He's gone into the midfield but can go forward and kick goals. It was the Smalls that did the damage last, last year. Kicked nine goals, um, there's Smalls against us. Um, and the other one that I'm worried about going forward for Richmond, I know he played on a wing in the preseason games and, and played very good football, is Josh Caddy. Missed out on last year's grand, grand final. Um, played in the, the two others, um, but
But we go right back to 2017 where he was a really dynamic forward. Um, and he's, he's one of those players is a really hard matchup. I want to see I want to see Lockie Plowman like Kerno. I want to see him play a purely lockdown role. Um, whether, whether that's on uh, Castagna or if Caddy goes forward, I'd probably prefer him to play on Castagna. I think Lockie Plowman's role now is on that smaller type forward rather than the median type who can trouble him in, trouble him in the air. I I just I'm really uncomfortable with, with Plowman being played as an intercept defender or, you know, playing at zoning defender. Um, I like to see him given a task and the, the, the smaller type player is in the best form and that smaller type player at the moment who can cause us headaches is Jason Castagna. Um, but once again, it's going to be difficult to contain Richmond. Um, they had against the... Pies, I know it was a preseason game. They had 64 inside 50s to Collingwood's 46. Um, and they had nearly 50 more marks. Um, so they'd like to play the possession game, but that's it's an incredible amount of inside 50, 64. We give Richmond 64 entries, we do not win the game. So it becomes part of our midfield as well, how well we can defend from a team defensive point of view. But if we give that much ball, um, I don't care if we've got bloody Jesus Christ as our key backs. Um, we're not winning this game of football. You look at Richmond's defence. I love, I love everything about their defence. I really do. Um, Grimes is a, he's an annoying prick, um, but he's a good player. Um, but it, it's, it's about the way they manipulate the plus one. They do it, they do it so easily, um, and it's almost like they. They fool the opposition, who never seem to quite have an answer for the likes of Jaden Short, um, Liam Baker, and, and Butcher Hawley. It'd be interesting to see if Butcher Hawley plays. They get off the leash. Even guys like Nathan Broad seem to have a lot of time and a lot of you know areas of that back line to have space and to be able to use the ball. But the one who's been in super form is Jaden Short. And um, I... I want to target him. Um, I don't want that pure, just defensive small forward who doesn't impact the scoreboard or doesn't get any of the ball himself. But I don't know. I don't know. I'd like to see... It's going to be interesting. I'd like to see possibly Lockie, Lockie Fogarty get that job. I know... I'm looking at the St Kilda practice game. I reckon he may have had the job on Long, who provides a little bit of spark and run for St Kilda. I thought he did a reasonable job. I'm just wondering whether they were grooming Fogarty for that role. Um, and as the game progressed, Fogarty started to get into the game himself. So if you look at short, I mean, you look at, and this is, they've just done unbelievably well, the Tigers. I mean, unbelievable recruiting. Jason Constantia, I mentioned him. I mean, he's the one I want to target in the forward half. He's a rookie. And then you look at Jaden Short. He's the one I want to target in the back half. And he's a rookie as well. So they've picked up two rookies who become near, near A graders. This is what he did against the Pies. He won the best and fairest last year in a premiership year with the likes of Trent Koch and Prestia. I don't know they missed a fair bit of footy Prestia last year, but he's won the best and fairest, you know, with Dusty Martin playing just about every game. I mean, this is an incredible year by a, a kid off the rookie list playing in a, in a, in a no-frills position in the back line. This is what he did in the uh, the Pracky against Collingwood. He racked up 43 disposals. He said 35 kicks. I mean, this must have been BO or something. Eight handballs, took 12 marks and had nine intercepts, seven score involvement, six inside 50, six inside 50s. I mean, we don't even have wingers or half forwards or midfielders who have six inside 50s. And a whopping 958 metres gained. That, that is incredible. And what we know about Jaden Short, he's arguably, I reckon he's in the best dozen kicks in the competition in terms of length and accuracy. Um, and this is what he said after the game. I'm not really sure if I go to the corridor or skinny. I'll just make it up as I go. And hopefully a nice kick comes off because I don't really handle so that hit me when I see that. I don't really handle. This is um, Jaden Short after the game. So we have to somehow force 
this bloke to handball. And I don't know how you do that, but I have got a feeling that you're going to have to put some bloody hard work into him defensively. And one thing about a guy like Jaden Short and Liam Baker as well, they're both both about the same age and they're cheeky little buggers and so they should be. They've been part of a dynasty. Two grand finals these two kids have played. They'd be feeling on top of the world. They'd be feeling like a million bucks, part of this group of defenders who are there to protect them, the likes of Asprey and Grimes. Um, Bolter's doing a job down there. They're all physical and big and strong. Then they've got their midfield and Trek Cochin, who's an enforcer. And they'd be just feeling so comfortable. I don't think anyone's put any work into the likes of Jaden Short or even a Liam Baker. Um, to see what they're truly made of. I reckon they're made of the right stuff, don't get me wrong. But I'd like to see it. I really would. I'd like to see some work done on Jaden Short. I reckon he's a gun, an absolute gun. And I reckon that's a job for Lockie Foggy. Um, please don't give me a, a Cunningham playing on him. Um, I want to see I want to see someone with a little bit of a little bit of spunk and a little bit of vigor playing on Jaden Short. And I reckon I reckon I reckon Lockie Fogarty, boy out of Spotswood, is a bit of a hard nut. Um, he might be able to do that job, so I'm looking forward to seeing that pan out on Thursday night. Forward, okay, I mentioned our forward setup. It's just going to have to be unpredictable. I'm going to talk about Harry in a minute, but I want to know what the fuck is the role of, of Jack Martin at the moment. He's a bloke that's become a little bit lost as far as I'm concerned. I reckon the second half of last year he dropped off. I thought his pre-season games were really, really ordinary. Where's he playing? Is he midfield or is he forward? Don't give me his part and part. And, okay, he, he looks lost as far as I'm concerned. Is he working hard enough? Does he know his role? Um, is it either forward or midfield? I, I, I don't know. I just want to see that defined a little bit more for Jack Martin, he had a terrific game against the Tigers last year where he kicked four and could be a potential match winner for us. I don't know about our small forwards. Um, this is going to be one of the more interesting, intriguing things to see. Um, can, <laughs> can Fisher actually take his game to a new level in regards to a small forward? I, I'm in the true believer you are born a small forward. It's very hard to teach it. Um, but it's all about getting the ball to the deck as far as, as far as I'm concerned. We'll play Levi, we'll play Harry. It's about competition. If I see Levi outmarked, if I see Harry outmarked in our forward 50 in a one-on-one or a three-on-two, then I'm going to be bloody disappointed. If I don't see the likes of Cunningham and the likes of Fogarty and the likes of Betts if he plays on our small forwards, okay, applying unbelievable defensive pressure and getting in the right positions and even taking uncontested marks themselves, okay, then questions need to be asked. Okay, so I don't think we win. I just think it's it's near on impossible, but it'd be interesting to see how the players are approaching this. And I truly believe that they think they can win the game. I often hear the, um, the notion and these are five things I want to see. Okay, these are the five things I want to see if I if we don't win, and there's no honourable losses, I'll be completely disappointed because I think we should now, we should now be in a position to be pushing Richmond right to the line, okay, and starting to win these games. Okay, Richmond did it in their climb. It's it's now time for us to do it. But I still don't believe we are a good enough football team to be doing that. But these are the things I want to see, almost like the non-negotiables. Okay, so the number one thing I want to see. Okay, I'm going to go through five, is I want to see the termination fire in the belly from the opening bounce. I do not want to see Richmond get off to a flyer. Um, I do not want to see our players intimidated um, by Richmond. Okay, I know we, 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 we seem to be a team full of introverts and we're trying to recruit players. Unfortunately, we're not going to see Williams, who I think is you know, a bit of an extrovert. But I want, to, I want us to play like... We want to fucking be out on the... We actually want to be out on the ground. Um, and we don't want to be anywhere else but the MCG on a Thursday night playing in front of 50,000 people, playing in front of a massive audience. And I want to see it. I want to see the enthusiasm. I want to see players, defenders in the grill of their forwards. I want to see midfielders being aggressive at the stoppage. I want to see all that. I want to see protection. I want to see if we weigh a really hard tackle. I want to see heads shoved into the dirt. 
Um, and nothing stupid, but I just want to see the fire in the belly and the determination from the opening bounce. For the, and that's hard to sustain for four quarters, but it needs to be right from the start. Show me that you want to be out there. Please show me. Number two, I want to see Paddy Dow shine. I really do. He's had a really good preseason. Um, and all the words out of the club are that he's got his body right um, and he's, his confidence is starting to grow. This is not a time to go into your shell um, if you're Paddy Dow. I want him to grow in confidence and believe that he'd become an A-grade footballer. I want to see him take the game on at the stoppage and if he fucks a kick up or a handball and he turns it over, that's okay because that's part of the game. Um, in fact, I would actually like to see him start the game in the centre of the ground and give him that responsibility from the opening bounce. Um, and I want to see I want to see him do some paddy down things, whether that's kicking a goal from a stoppage, whether that's spinning out of traffic and, and setting a, up a goal with, with, with great hands. But I want to see it. It doesn't necessarily have to be 25 disposals and two goals. It could be 15, 16 disposals, which 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 are which are damaging. Um, we need to see it. We need to see it from Paddy. And I do not want to see in the big game, first game of the year him coming off with an ordinary game and going back to what it was last year. I think it's really important for him and us and his confidence that he starts off the season really well. Number three, if Harry plays, which we're hearing he is, I want to see him take a leaf out of the book of Tom Lynch up the other end, who everyone hates. And I don't give a shit whether people hate Tom Lynch or not. I'd love to have him playing for Carlton. Okay, he's an antagonizer. He he gets in the grill of his opposition. He, he's got that shit me look about him, but he's good. Um, and the thing about Tom Lynch is he plays with pain. He plays through injuries. Okay, he, he had that serious knee injury, but he came and played well one, round one a few years back in his first game for Richmond was outstanding. Last year, he played with a broken hand and wore a glove and threw himself at the ball. He's not worrying about his injuries. He's just playing the game. Okay, and he performs. He performs. And you know what? He mightn't be kicking goals all the time, but he's always in the game. I want Harry, okay, I want Harry to get tougher. I really do. He's a big boy. It's okay to be posting stuff on Instagram about, you know, you're improving your running and you've got big guns and you're doing this and you're doing that. You know what, mate? Okay, like Jacob Wearing, you're in your sixth or seventh season of senior football. It's about time you push through some of that pain, okay, and become, okay, become a real enforcer for the Carlton Football Club. And that doesn't necessarily mean in kicking five or six goals a game. That means, okay, being aggressive in the air, okay, hurting your opposition. If they're in your way, you're putting in their knees in their back. It's doing everything, okay, to become a team player. Um, and, and drop the feeling sorry for yourself if things are not going your way. And also drop the feeling sorry for yourself if you twist your ankle, you go off straight away and you don't come back on and you use injuries as an excuse. That might be a little bit tough, but sometimes, okay, I get the impression with some of those players, there's a little bit of a prima donna sort of, sort of thing going on here. And I want to see Harry, okay, if you've got attitude, mate, show us, okay, because I don't think you have shown us a lot of attitude so far in your short career. We know you've got some ability, so start to show it. Number four, the thing that shits me a little bit is the comment, and I hear it from our coaches, I hear it from our players when they're interviewed, and it's a natural thing that you say, is they say our best is good enough against, you know, our best is good enough to beat anyone on its day. Uh, please give me a spell start to show us please i do not stop saying our best is good enough it's a, and, and it's about performing for four quarters because our best is good enough on its day no 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 it's not we see a fleeting moment of good fleeting there might be a 15 minute patch and that's it i'm sick and tired of hearing it okay give us two and a half three quarters of Bet the best football, and if that's good enough to get the four points, then let's start to show it. Because you're not going to have a best for four quarters, but start to show it. Because we're sick and tired of hearing our best is good enough. Because that I have not seen. I have not. No way known is our best good enough to beat, beat Richmond. So start to show it. Start to prove it. Okay. Because we are a fair way off the pace still. We have proven nothing yet. 
So instead of saying our best is good enough, start the fucking show. And the final thing, this game for me, okay, is going to be dictated by our leaders. Um, and I have reservations about the whole co-captaincy thing. I did a whole episode on the co-captaincy thing. And this is not a knock on Cripper. It's not a knock on Sam Doherty. Um, I've spoken about the influence and impact of Trent Gotchen, who, who learned the hard way about being a captain. They're both at a similar age now, both Doherty and Cripps, where they've matured into their football. Um, but it's about time to start showing it from a leadership point of view. I don't, I don't know what the work they do off the ground. I'm sure it's really good. But as far as I'm concerned, it's all about what it looks like on the ground both from what they're able to do individually, but also most importantly, how they're able to influence the rest of the group. Um, and it's about Doherty in the back half, cutting down on mistakes, being accountable, defending hard as a skipper, okay? It's not zoning off and getting easy kicks and then turning it over. It's about when it's your turn to go, it's your turn to go. And I'm not, I, I wanted to get back to what the, the, the physicality he showed before he did his knee injury. And as far as Cripp is concerned, the same. He's got to cut, okay, he's got to cut out, okay, drawing it too, too much, okay, and keep it simple, but be aggressive and really aggressive. He is the, one of the biggest blokes out on that football field, but sometimes I just think he is too nice and he gets pushed around. It's time for these two to stand up. It really is. And then the next layer underneath as well. So if I'm a young player... I'm looking for them. I'm looking for them too. I'm looking for them to show the way, okay? Um, I want everyone, okay, to be putting their head over the pill. I want everyone to be leading from the front. But this is why we have leaders, because they're the ones who set the standards on the ground, okay? You can say as much as you want off the field, but <laughs> on the ground is when it counts. So, Doc is spilling a mark and turning it over in the opening five minutes. He's set the tone, okay? He's set the tone. If Cripper does the same thing, he fucks a kick up inside 50, forward 50 because he, he wants to take the opposition on. He gets caught on his left. He sets the tone, okay? That's about it. Um, I'm generally excited. I really am. Um, I want to see our boys do really well. I want to see them start off the season well. I don't think a victory is going to come. Um, but I want them to set the tone of what we can expect for the rest of the season. Um, we can ill afford to be well off the pace in this opening round. Um, I hope you enjoyed these videos uh, in regards to the match preview. Please subscribe, um, support the channel. I appreciate all the feedback. And I'll be back again uh, with another episode shortly. Bye for now.